tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. So today, I'm actually excited for today's episode. Um, I invited four young professionals. They actually don't know each other, but they have one thing in common. And that is, they work for the Philippine government. So I'm not going to prolong this. I really want to introduce to you my guests for today. So our first guest is Jermaine Salvador. She is the SK Chairwoman of Barangay Ayala Alabang. And she is also the Vice President of the SK Federation of Muntinlupa City. And she is also one of my bestest friends. So hello, Jermaine. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hi, Erica. Um, I'm good so far. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you, V81, for the invite and for considering me to be one of your guests. I've been leading and serving people. Wow, people. Actually, yes. even when I was younger, um, okay. I didn't notice it pa before. But I think it's already my passion because okay. even... When I was a little girl, ako na yung palaging nino nominate as class president or uh, yeah, actually to the point na um, I was already like uh, running for positions in the student council. Ganyan. You was so. What made you decide to do what you're doing now? And is okay. there something? Yeah. Actually, it's it's kind of um, a long story, but. Mm-hmm. Um, if I were to sum it up, to be honest, um, this is uh, an answered answered prayer, or it's more of like it's God's way of um, really leading me to the path that He wants me to be in. Because, um, to be honest, even if I started being um, a leader since I was a kid, um, I also came to a point wherein I told myself maybe the real um, Political world is not for me. Because oh, okay. it's so different. Right. Um, it, being in the real political arena is so different mm-hmm. compared to um, being in student government. Yeah, that's what true. I mean. And it, 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 it's mm-hmm. it's 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 a tough choice. But then, you know, I just really prayed about it. Like um, when the the opportunity came knocking on my door, actually, it was there pa even when I was younger. But then mm-hmm. I kept saying no. Eh, I was like, it, it knocked on my door again, mm-hmm. and then I was like, God, is this really what you want me to do? Okay. If ever give me science, oh, ba, pa ako sa science. <laughs> so, so, so yon. So, um, yeah, I got those signs, and I was like, oh, sige, let me just trust and see, because if I know, naman, if God puts me in this situation, He will help me get through it. Then, so yeah. I was Agreed. like, okay, let's do this. Ayan na, bahala na. Right. And I'm also glad that um, I have mentors talaga, like, are uh, headed by our barangay captain. Yung barangay mm-hmm. cap- council talaga, they're really yes. um, helping me. Um, and also, my team, my SK team. And mm-hmm. syempre kayo, like, um, ah. my youth organization. Kasi kung hindi ko nang alaman, viewers, <laughs> sa ating mga minamahal na viewers um, si Erica rin po ang head ng aming youth organization sa aming barangay o oh, ba? perfect yes. <laughs> so yeah so I'm really blessed that I have a really um, great support system and at the same time I learn from them I, mean, I learn mm-hmm. from you guys so it's a two way street for me so I'm really yeah. glad so next we have attorney Lyle Matba Okay, medyo mahaba tong position niya, but he is the Chief Political Affairs Officer of the Congressman of the Lone Province, a uh, Lone District of Tawi Tawi. Si medyo mahaba po, but we have Attorney Lyle Matba, another good friend of mine actually. So, hi Attorney, how are you? Hi, good afternoon, thanks for having me. Course. Thank you also for accepting my invitation. So, attorney, how did you become attorney? What's your background story? Would you mind sharing it to our viewers? Oh, yes, I mind. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> how did I become a lawyer? Um, but I took up law at UP. Uh, pre-law was UP. My high school was UP. Uh, 
took the bar mm-hmm. last year. Actually, it's my one year anniversary tomorrow since passing the bar. And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, thank you. <laughs> this is nice. Congrats. I have Chris Marie Balbido. She is the Labor and Employment Officer under the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration. Guys, you have you have so you have long names. But anyways, hi Chris Marie, how are you? Hello, I'm doing okay naman. Kakapagod, pero I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris Marie, account naman. What is your uh, background story? Well, I'm Chris Marie. I'm 21. I graduated from Benilde with a degree in Consular and Diplomatic Affairs. So mm-hmm. growing up, talaga, I was really interested in political affairs, international okay. relations. So that's really what pushed me para to take yung Consular and Diplomatic Affairs. We have one more guest, last but not the least, Anton Valde. He is, na naman ito. He <laughs> is the team lead of the Regulatory Management and Training Division under the Anti-Red Tape Authority, which is under the Office of the President. So, hello, Anton. Kamusta? Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be on your show. I know. I'm excited to have you here as well. So, Anton, ikaw naman. Ano, yeah. ano yung backstory mo? Well, actually, Chris Marie and I are from the same school. I, I'm also from De La Salle College of St. Benil. Uh, I majored in Consular and Diplomatic Affairs as well, but I think I'm one year ahead of um, Chris Marie. Um, I graduated 2018 and I took um, a government job about uh, three months after graduation. This is actually my first job, so mm-hmm. I've stayed ever since. And uh, going into public service, um, yeah, I think um, my calling, for a lack of a better term, I think calling mm-hmm. for public service started early as well. I was very involved in student politics and stuff like that. And also, uh, growing up, uh, my uh, my late grandfather was um, he was also a public servant. Um, he served a term as mayor um, in a town here in Quezon Province. So, just yeah. watching him sort of be passionate about public service, I think that's that's where it started. And yeah, now I'm here. I think I'm more than going two years into my first job and into government service. So your yeah. job, what? What you Maybe mean? you could share more insight on what an SK chairwoman does or what you do also as VP. I'm sure your the viewers would want to know more about what you do. Okay, so um, it goes both ways, man. Like, uh, of course, as a chairperson, you have to come up with projects, events, activities that would help um the youth of the barangay and at the same time um since i'm also an officer for the federation we also do that in the fed um in our barangay naman parang we we also we, we don't want kasi to be tagged as alam mo yun, parang sk puro sports yan ayaw namin ng ganun so we right. also we're also um coming up with projects like would help them towards education towards health ganyan yung uh, even mga um, trainings and all that. So, what's it like being in a in the political sector at such a young age? I mean, again, you mentioned a while ago that you are surrounded by your mentors, and of course, your mentors are older than you. Mm-hmm. So, what may quanting pressure ba on your end? Um, in all honesty, yes. I wouldn't even lie about that because of course like being at this age iba pa yung inasa isip natin na gagawin. others are still finding their niches in life like me I'm also finding my niche in life but then like if you like being in the political arena in the political sector at this age yeah it's re- extremely challenging I'm oh, telling yeah. you because mm-hmm. yung akala mong napapanood mo lang sa TV it can happen. I'm not saying in our barangay because lodi ko talaga yung mga leaders natin dyan. What do you but, mean what you see in the TV? You know, parang... Hindi naman, like, I'm not, I'm not saying everything. Pero like, alam mo yun, parang... How things work, kahit sa movies man yan. Alam mo yun, parang some of it 
can be a reality rin pala. Alam mo yun, I, I won't go into details na rin. Pero, um, let's just put it at that. Pero, alam mo yun, at the same time, whenever, for example, like, whenever we would have our council meetings, council meetings mismo sa barangay, like with the older barangay um, council, I would really admire how Cap would um, lead. Because, of course, I would look after. I, I would look. I would. I would look how, at how Cap would do some decisions. Do okay. to, to, to really. Alam mo yun, parang minsan talaga na papa ganon na lang ako na parang ganon naman ni Cap. Bakit ganon? Sana ako rin ganyan. Yung ganon. Because <laughs> yeah. at the same time, um, yung yung mga kagawad din. Um, they would suggest solutions na parang, wow, oh nga, no, pwede pala yun. Yung, alam mo yun, parang yeah. at this age, na, na expose ka na sa mga ganong, sa mga ganong scene. Like, mm-hmm. real life situation na issues. Right. Yung tipong, actually, pwede ka pang, alam mo yun, konting pagkakamali mo lang, pwede kang makulong. Mm-hmm. Alam mo yun. So, it's really, really, really challenging and risky. But at the yeah. same time, it's so inspiring what is it like being the chief political affairs officer what is your day-to-day basis uh chief political affairs officer is this fancy term we have for chief of staff okay Got chief it. of staff for the office of the congressman of the lone district of Tawi Tawi. uh what do i do? uh i don't know <laughs> actually uh the honest thing is if you work for government you don't know what I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, what do I do? Uh, I make sure everything's running smoothly. Okay. Uh, I make sure things happen. Uh, I handle the administrative stuff. I make sure the uh, vision no, of my principal is properly executed. I prepare everything for what he needs, for his meetings, for his for his uh, engagements and stuff like that. Okay. Okay, so um, as you mentioned, you help also prepare for his meetings. Um, yeah. Curious question: Do you also are you, parang allowed to um, attend the hearings of the congressmen? As yeah, but um, not on their behalf. Yeah, parang of course. Lang. Parang, parang, uh, I'm sit in and then just take notes. Mm-hmm. Right. And just uh, report to my principal what happened. Okay, okay. So, what's it what's it like being part of the um, political sector, uh, mainly there, being part of, working for the House of Representatives at such a young age? Do you feel also the pressure? Um, is it challenging and risky as like what Jermaine said? Um, my difference kasi with Jermaine. Jermaine? Mm-hmm. Jermaine? Yes, Jermaine. Is we're on we're on the technical side of things. Okay. On the open. Uh, okay. So that notwithstanding, there's still some pressure, yes. Just like mm-hmm. what Jermaine I'm not gonna lie about it. There's some pressure to deliver, but if I may add to what she said, at one point you just stop caring about the pressure of like, yeah, whatever. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's still about results. It's still about delivering what you need to do, what you need mm-hmm. to give to your constituents. Question. Um, you uh, mentioned okay. a while ago that you are also on the technical side. Maybe okay. it, um, you can expound a little more on the technical side. What do you do? Al- alibawa yung yung projects uh, mm-hmm. na pwedeng ma-implement dun sa sa district. Okay. Uh, although ultimately it will be the executive uh, branch, executive arm of the government that uh, mm-hmm. uh, implements it. The yes. project identification, the itemization, mm-hmm. no, right. uh, happens in Congress. Okay. So the technical side. There, the technical challenge there is to uh, not really challenge, but more on the technical side of matters is to mm-hmm. uh, okay, you 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 uh, like for instance, last when was that? I think last March. Okay. Yeah, let's just, wow, March, several lifetimes ago. <laughs> um, 
we had a consultative we called it a congressional summit we have a we had a con consultative meeting with the uh, mayors of Tawi-Tawi the heads okay. of the LGUs in Tawi-Tawi Okay. So the technical component there is to listen to them. Okay, what do you need? What do you want? What kinds of mm -hmm. projects do you need? What infrastructure projects do you need? What, mm -hmm. what solar mm -hmm. projects do you need there? Because whatever you need, let's say you have an, a, a wish list of 10 items. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, uh, let me see which of these items we could um, uh, successfully uh, 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 be included in the national budget sure some of the viewers right now are wondering where tawi tawi is okay so maybe we'll just give a brief history or like background on where tawi tawi is where is tawi tawi um we're the southernmost uh province mm -hmm. uh, of the philippines um yeah. uh we're close actually we're closer to malaysia or indonesia than we are to the next philippine province which is Sulu. Mm -hmm. Stand on the sands on the beach, and then you could see Malay. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, please visit us. Uh, well, yes. after after, after <laughs> all this yeah. MTQ is behind us, please visit mm -hmm. us. Please promote. Uh, please uh, support <laughs> our provinces uh, tourism. What's your um, job like as a labor and employment officer? Maybe you could tell us more about what you do. So basically, our agency, POEA, we handle all concerns of um, documentation of OFW. So if they want to leave, if they want to work abroad, okay. usually, samin talaga sila pupunta to get um, properly documented. So on my end naman, I got assigned to airports and IA. And what okay. we do there, yeah, what we do there naman is we validate if the documents they have, they presented, is really legit and real. As in, um, we need to check if okay ba yung documents nila, meron bang mali, is there something wrong with it? And mm -hmm. if meron man, ano yung magagawa namin to help them para maging documented sila or maayos yung um, documents sa hawak nila. So yun yung usually yung ginagawa namin sa airport until now, yeah. Until now? So yes. you are... You go to the airport every day, tama ba? You report there? Uh, we um right now during the ECQ kasi um mm -hmm. sobrang limited ng workforce namin. So right. uh usually kasi dapat mga every terminal meron kaming dalawa or tatlong tao to handle okay. the people, yung mga OFWs. Pero right now since only one terminal is operational, terminal mm -hmm. 1. So mm -hmm. two lang kami every shift. So, yung shift namin right now, it's 24 hours. <laughs> 24 hours. Pero, ano naman siya? Once a week. Once, once a week a lang week. naman. Yes, once oh, a week. You know, I'm sure, pag, I, I don't know if they're watching, but baka yung mga sina Sir Gary. Uh, by the way, Sir Gary is the CDA D Dean. Tama, Dean na siya ngayon. Dean, yes. Dean Gary na pala. So, I'm sure if he's watching, um, Ma, mapa proud na naman yan kasi CDA student at such a young age you've already you know experienced all of this and you have a long way to go yes, uh, you so are good. I can see it you are going to move mountains wow. so Anton share naman yeah. your your story um what I mean yeah. what do you do as a team leader well um as, yeah, I'm a team leader now, so I do have a small team. I'm managing a small team right now. I think there's mm -hmm. three of us. And so um, what we do in our department, I'm under the Better Regulations Office. So what we do is we conduct a lot of research. Um, mm -hmm. We sort of monitor national and international trends in policy making okay. because um, our job is, uh, in the Better Regulations Office is we're going to set up what we call as a regulatory management system. Okay. So that's a set of policies, tools, and institutions to ensure that we have quality regulations in the Philippine regulatory environment. And okay. what's nice is that hasn't been done before in the Philippines. So we really are in the front lines of yeah. setting up that system. So we're working at a very national scope and we're taking things, you know, one step at a time because it's quite a big task, especially for such a young team mm -hmm. and a young organization in itself. Uh, but for the, specifically in my division, the regulatory management and training division, uh, mm -hmm. we use that research and we actually train other government agencies 
we train them in what we call as regulatory impact assessment. So it's a tool being used in mostly developed countries like um, Australia, South Korea, oh. and the UK. Oh, yeah. So okay. it's mm -hmm. not necessarily the first time it's been introduced here, but this is yeah. the first time the government is now required to actually conduct regulatory impact assessment. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So that's a, just a reg regulatory impact assessment or what we call RIA is a tool just to make sure that all of our policies are based on facts, based on empirical data, rather than just it being based on gut feeling and mm -hmm. faith, what we call it. So we're not just teaching agencies how to use this tool, but we're also teaching them how to think. We are reshaping the way we make policies in the Philippines so, mm -hmm. that, so that when we present these policies to our decision makers, like secretaries or head of agencies, we can present to them that these are the numbers. My recommendation is based on facts. And mm -hmm. when they make a decision, it's very transparent and it's very accountable. So there's a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah, so. that, that's a lot. I mean, uh, sorry, how many are you um, working for the um, Anti-Red Tape Authority? Right. The Anti-Red Tape Authority is very young. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's just about 90 of us right now. Nine. But uh, we oh. have recently opened up positions, so that number is going to grow soon. Oh, okay. yeah. So there's, yeah. But that's still that's still a big number for a young yeah. um department. If you mm -hmm. say. Okay. So um, what else? What is your day to day basis like? Well, it really uh, depends. So we have sort of seasons. Like mm -hmm. supposedly, if there was no ECQ right now. Okay. Uh, my team and I would be going out and about. We would be teaching other government agencies on the tool that I just said. So it's about, so we take about like six months for that to complete. So we just go around other government agencies and we teach people, um, we teach other government agencies. Mostly they're like twice our age, like maybe in their 30s or their 40s. But it's an exciting job because we get to meet, meet people. I look very mm -hmm. young and Mm -hmm. It does kind of have that atmosphere, but when the lectures or the sort of our classes start, it's really, you know, we sort of acknowledge that, yes, we are both professionals in our own field and we can mm -hmm. learn something from one another here. Right. That's true. Yeah. That's so nice, no? Uh, hearing <laughs> so, someone as young as you teaching um, older people. And so, yeah. since you... Um, Educate these uh, mm -hmm. people working in the in the different um, departments. What mm -hmm. is one trick that mm -hmm. you learned in order to get their attention? So I'm I'm sure you know when yeah. let's say we teach people our age, we do certain things. But now you're teaching mm -hmm. older people. What is one trick that you do to get their attention? Surprisingly, these older, much more mature people, if I, <laughs> if yeah. I could uh, term it better, um, they respond well to games. Um, games? Because, yeah, they oh, respond really? well to games. Because um, in one class, we have like about 30 or 35 people. And mm. then we sort of pit them. We pit them against each other, sort of telling them that there's a prize at the end of this lecture. Okay. So it really gets competitive. Okay. And we also do... Um, we also do tests, right? So we do a pre-test and then we do a post-test and then we inform them that whoever gets the highest score gets a prize. Mm -hmm. And we really see that when we, in, we incorporate games or, in, or interactive um, methods into teaching our uh, lectures, we do see that they can retain the information. And at the end of the course, we do see an increase of scores. Yeah. So surprisingly, yeah, older people do like to play games. Keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing, Anton. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing. Thank you. So, there you go, guys. I've interviewed all of my four guests for today. Actually, let's get them back on screen. May we call on Jermaine, uh, Lyle, Chris Marie, and Anton. Where are they? There we go. There, there's everyone. Hello. Hello. Um, we're back. It's sad that we're not together, but hopefully one day after the ECQ, we'll all get together and meet personally. For sure, we have a lot to talk about. Um, why don't we read some comments? Mm -hmm. uh, I, there are a few. Okay. Ah, for oh, Anto. Wow. wow. What are <laughs> different government agents? Okay, what do you teach in the different government agents? Yes. 
So um, like I said earlier, we're teaching a tool called Regulatory Impact Assessment. So this is a very new tool. I, it only became required last 2018 when Republic Act 11032 got signed into a law. So we're teaching government agencies how to use this tool. And it employs a lot of um, sort of science, uh, sort of a, it's a systematic process. So there are steps involved, sort of how to identify a problem, how to think outside of the box when it comes to coming up with policy alternatives. So it's really about making regulations um, not not, uh, not redundant or it doesn't cause undue regulatory burden to the public. And its ultimate aim is to improve the regulatory environment in the Philippines. Because as you know, there are a lot of regulations right now that yes. aren't that doesn't seem to make sense. Or uh-huh. if it does make sense, it's in conflict with another regulation. So we are trying to sort of um, improve that environment and sort of clean slate make sure that everything is working that the government really strives for one goal and one purpose Hmm. nice to see different youth thank you who are active in our government yes that's why i invited these four because i wanted to get for you guys for the viewers to know what it's like working in the government you know and maybe just maybe some of our viewers are thinking about entering the political sector here you go you know for me if you if you have the heart if you have the passion to serve then why not i think um i will just echo what um attorney lyle lyle ba? Lyle yes. said earlier, um, apart from the fact that, you know, when, when you have the passion and the heart for service, you should also, and apart from saying na parang, you should also be accountable and be responsible and be transparent yeah. with your um, constituents and all that. You also have to be, you also have to keep your feet on the ground because at the end of the day, every day is a is a learning experience. Like, you will encounter a lot of people, a lot mm-hmm. of situations and circumstances that would make you feel like hindi pa rin pala talaga. Parang you would also feel like, do I really deserve this position? Mm-hmm. So, just treat every day as a learning experience and at the same time um, make use of it for you to be a better leader and a better person and always stick to your principles hmm. to whatever you believe in because at the end of the day it's you who make your own image and yeah. your own influence to other people because eh, syempre if people see you do something wrong Wala na yan, forever edge na yan sa utak nila. Like one mistake, especially yeah. especially like what Attorney Lyle said, when you're in the front lines talaga, you're so exposed to all of these things. Na parang konting mali mo lang. Konting mali mo lang, batikos na agad eh. Alam mo yun? Konting, konting mali lang ng pagkasabi mo, batikos na agad. So, you also have to be careful. Yes. You also have to be careful. And I just want to wish everyone there in the Philippines to please stay safe. Another problem uh, the youth might uh, experience is para masyad tayong excited to change the world. Uh, we were too excited. Why do we have these structures that, you know, uh, continue oppression, continue inequality and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, very important. Ito, turo lang din ng matatanda sa atin. Ano? Uh, uh, stay patient. Uh, change will take time. Um, roll with the punches. It's gonna get ugly. It is ugly. And sometimes, it does get uglier. Uh, but, we just have to, nothing else we can do about it. That's the system we have right now. Is it good? Of course not. Can it be better? Definitely, yes. Um, we just have to take it one step for the ano na lang, so if you want to uh, work sa government, be patient. La, 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 lalo na if government agencies you're dealing with, mga um, DTI, POEA, uh, DOLE, you have to be patient kasi medyo matagal yung process para ma- makapasok ka sa isang government agency. So you have to be patient and kailangan ready ka sa interview, you have to research everything about dun sa agency na gusto mong pasukan. So, it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it if you really want it. 
I'm really appreciate again your program for giving the youth this platform to really sort of um, inspire other young people to do the things we do or maybe even do better things than what we do because and I also really encourage other young people to really enter into the public sector because you really can be the change that you want to see as much as I hate that cliche line it's true right um, we really give that breath of fresh air into the system and we really have that transformative power to um, slowly bit by bit um, change um, things for the better you know and yeah I'm um, um, and also, you know, just be really patient and work hard. You will encounter a lot of setbacks, a lot of sort of disappointments, but sort of the universe will work itself out later yeah. down the road. Have four young professionals. They they're very inspiring. I mean, even me, I'm I'm lost for words. You have someone who's just 21 years old, and she already worked for what the the army and then now uh, POEA and you have also um, Anton you know teaching teaching what um, young older people sorry teaching more mature people and he's only you know 22 so I hope um, my viewers you learn something today and you took their words to heart I mean if again if you want to enter the public sector by all means go I, it, as cliche as it sounds we are the future in kabataan talaga stay tuned for the next episode only here on V81 radio manila